Welcome to the introduction to the IvoBay system from IvoClar Vivident. The IvoBay system allows you to fabricate highly compatible high-quality dentures in a fully automated and shrinkage compensating process. The IvoBase material used is available in two versions, IvoBase Hybrid and IvoBase High Impact. This instructional video introduces you to the use of the individual system components and points out special features. Please refer to the instructions for use for more detailed information. The anatomic contouring should correspond with the future completed dentures to as large an extent as possible. This will help you save time during subsequent finishing. Check the wax up in the articulator after try-in. The contact points in the occlusion should already be established at this point. At the same time, the support pin should contact the tray. After that, secure the denture body with wax and store the model in a water bath for five minutes. Use the separating fluid supplied with the material to isolate stone-to-stone -stone surfaces. To prepare the flask, coat the inner surfaces of the flask halves with a thin layer of petroleum jelly. The two flask halves are identical. Both can be used for model investment and for the counter model. Now place the flask lid, the access former half and, very important, the filter wax component in the recess intended for that purpose. You can now invest the model in stone. Use a class 3 hard stone for this. Make sure to place the model in the center of the flask. The distance between the anterior part of the model and the flask housing must be at least approximately 10 millimeters. The gingivo buckle fold should be at the same height as the flask edge. Remove the excess stone so that the stone is flush with the model edge and the flask edge. It is particularly important that the access former half is flush embedded in stone. If this is not done, stone may chip off during the subsequent working steps and the flask will become untight. Once the stone has completely set, Replace the access former half with the access former full. The injection wax component may now be pressed over the conical tip of the access former and to the stone surface. Place the sprue by pressing it against the center of the palatal roof and vestibular to both tubers of the contouring. Make sure that the sprue is well secured in all areas. In order to aerate the hollow space of the flask during injection, attach an aeration channel in the anterior region of all restorations. Place the complete wax components in such a way that there is a connection between the wax up and the filter wax component. The aeration channels must not come into contact with the flask housing when being pressed into place in order to ensure that the flask is tight. For mandibular complete dentures, cut off the center sprue and place the outer sprues in the lingual area of the retromolar triangle. The denture saddles of partial dentures are provided with a sprue each at the dorsal ends. Cover the teeth, as well as the anatomically contoured alveolar area, and the lingual of the palatal areas, if required, with a flowable to medium viscosity addition cross-linking silicone. The Shore A hardness should be at least 65. Apply retentive patterns in the surface of the silicone before it sets to secure the silicone in the stone of the counter model. Make sure that the occlusal surfaces and incisal edges of the teeth remain free of silicone. Furthermore, the access former must not be covered in silicone. After injection, silicone investment protects the teeth during divesting and saves much time during finishing. After that, isolate the stone-to-stone -stone contact surfaces. 
Now lock the two flask halves using the locking clasps. Make sure that the flask edge is clean. Allow the mixed class 3 stone to flow into the opening of the flask on a shaker until the flask is completely filled. Prevent air from being trapped in the material. Skim off the excess stone using the Ivo based spatula so that no stone protrudes from the flask opening. Once the stone has set, heat the flask in a water bath at approximately 90 degrees Celsius or 194 degrees Fahrenheit for approximately 5 to 8 minutes. In this way, the wax is soft when the two flask halves are opened. Rough excess can be easily and generously removed with a plaster knife. Remove the excess former full. Now thoroughly boil out the wax residue at the inner surfaces with clean, boiling water. Use only clean water without additives such as wax solvents or cleaning agents. For an optimum bond between the resin teeth and the denture base resin, the cervical areas of the teeth, as well as the basal tooth surfaces, must be absolutely free of wax. After cleaning, roughen the basal surfaces by slightly sandblasting them. As an alternative, you can roughen the surfaces with a cross-cut burr. For further information on the processing of resin teeth, please refer to the instructions of the corresponding tooth manufacturer. Before isolation, cool the flask halves to below 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit using air or clean, cold water. Use the infrared thermometer supplied to check the temperature. Now remove stone residue sticking to the flask edge, isolation shoulder and recess for the aeration filter. Isolate the clean surfaces of the stone model using separating fluid. Prevent the material from pooling, for example in the gingival buckle fold. Apply a second isolation layer after 5 minutes. Take the aeration filter and place it flush in the corresponding recess in the flask. During injection, the sealing lip of the funnel is used to seal the hollow space in the flask in the injection direction. Therefore, the funnel must be completely embedded in stone to prevent the resin from escaping the flask. Press the Ivo base funnel into the centering insert until it stops and place it in the lower flask half. Make sure that no plaster residue remains in the injection area. Now lock the two flask halves with the locking clasps. One capsule is sufficient for the injection of a maxillary or mandibular complete denture. A short blast of compressed air between the monomer container and the capsule renders the monomer container easy to remove from the capsule. Use the spatula to mix the monomer and polymer to a homogeneous mixture for approximately 20 to 30 seconds. Make sure that the material is thoroughly mixed. The operation of the Ivo base injector is described in detail in the corresponding operating instructions. No more than five minutes should pass between mixing the material and the start of the polymerization program. Place the open capsule on an even surface. Position the centering insert with the flask on the capsule and press down. Do not tilt the capsule with the flask anymore to prevent the material from flowing out. Slide the flask with the capsule into the polymerization chamber until it stops via the flask holder. The flask perceptibly snapping into place indicates the correct position. For optimum results with IvoBase Hybrid and IvoBase High Impact, 
The IvoBase injector is equipped with polymerization programs especially designed for the respective materials. P1 for hybrid, P2 for high impact. To further reduce the residual monomer content, the optional RMR key can be activated. Select the corresponding program. Start the program. With IvoBase, the air in the anterior region automatically and completely escapes through the aeration filter until the flow of the resin seals the aeration filter and sets. This is necessary because displacement of the air through the stone is not always possible when using auto-curing polymers in the injection technique. The hollow space is thus aerated in a controlled manner which also prevents bubbles and porosities from forming in the resin. At the end of the program, an acoustic signal sounds. Remove the hot flask from the injector. Use the thermal glove for that purpose. The injector is ready for the next polymerization immediately after the flask has been removed. Cool the flask under cold running water for at least 15 minutes. If the flask is opened too soon, deformation of the dentures may occur. As an alternative, cooling may also take place in the injector, for example, overnight. Place the flask under a dental press with the divesting aid positioned between the stone and the press table. Load the divesting aid with slight pressure. Use a plaster knife to lever the upper flask half off by sliding the knife into the seam between the two flask halves. Rotate the flask and repeat the procedure. Remove the stone core with the capsule and separate the capsule at the sprue using a separating disc, burr, or saw. Divest the denture from the stone core as usual with stone tongs. Do not use a hammer for divestment, since this may damage the dentures. Due to the coordinated system components and the shrinkage compensating polymerization process, there is no increase in vertical dimension. The surface of the resin is a one-to-one -one copy of the previous wax-up. The polymerized ivo-base material is finished as usual with cross-cut tungsten carbide burrs, sandpaper, and polishing media. Please refer to the instructions for use for the repair, extension, and relining procedures.